hero. He was only picked seven times in the group stage, and he actually had a pretty good win rate, 57%, but very small sample size, and certainly a hero that you're not going to pick early in a draft. In terms of the playstyle, I think Alchemist provides a lot against Team Liquid. Team Liquid likes to group up and push as a lineup, and you throw down that acid spray, well, the push is going to get weakened. It's a lot easier to defend. And also, having an Alchemist on your team just gives them the impending clock. You know, if you don't beat me in 20, 25 minutes, Alchemist will take over a game. And we'll see if IG will have that game plan working out for them. But as the panel pointed out, I think they were favoring IG's draft. And I think you and I also favor IG's draft. Yeah, I'm curious to see how the Alchemist fits into it exactly. Obviously, this hero is very annoying if he gets farmed. So what will the build be? Are we going to see that, you know, the traditional nowadays Radiance build? Do we see that old school super? combat build. I think Sumail went for it one time on EG. You know, how do they look to play around this Alchemist? That really will be the big question that defines the overall way the teams match up. Yeah. My initial guess is you go for the armlet, you go for the Radiance, and you just stack armor. Because look at the other side. You got the, the Exhort Invoker. That's going to be dishing out a ton of physical damage. You got the Visage Birds. You got the Weaver. You got Bristleback. All of this is physical damage. So I, it would not surprise me if you see Shiva's Guard and Assault Karyas coming out here from Alchemist or just from the entirety of EG. Yeah, for me, looking at Team Liquid as we talk about the way they're going to match up, GH is probably the player that I have my eyes on most. He only played, I believe it was six heroes in the group stage, and the vast majority of them were either Earthshaker or Io. So mm -hmm. yeah, the Keeper of the Light was usually banned. Uh, they didn't want to go for it this game. Uh, oftentimes, it, it's Kuroki who takes up the Visage. But we, of course, his Tusk is fantastic. So GH, curious to see how he can contribute as a hero that we, don't, we haven't seen much of him at this event. Honestly, I don't think he will be able to contribute too much this game because he's played as a five in this game. Look at Kuroki. He's essentially roaming, playing as a four. And as a result, Visage is also a, a hero that it takes a while to come online. You know, he needs that level six to be active over the map. So I think the superstar that the panel was looking for in the form of GH, I don't think he's going to show up, at least not for the first 10 minutes. Maybe Kuroki gave him a few pointers. But he makes his move on mid here. So we are going to see some early 2v2 action skirmish in the mid lane. Otherwise, looking at the overall drafts and strategies as we have a bit of back and forth here, uh, how do you feel the two teams match up? On the side of Liquid, you've got that Miracle Invoker, which single-handedly has won countless games that looked almost unwinnable. Uh, is that what Liquid is relying on this game? How does IG look to play against that? And what are the team's overall game plans moving forward? Well, when Miracle goes off, it's generally because his team is setting him up for Sunstrike kills. What are the Sunstrike set up in this game? You got Ice Shards, you got Snowball, and perhaps the familiar stuns, none of these are super reliable. So I think Mirko just needs to outscale his opponent and land raw sun strikes, which can be extremely difficult against great players. And early on, 3CS, he is not having a great time now. Generally, Invoker wraps up a lot, right? As you get extra points in Exhort, uh, you get your levels. It gets a little bit easier to CS, but this Alchemist is really taking it to him early. OP dominating this mid lane. For sure, and his allies are doing an excellent job stacking the jungle, getting a couple of denies in here, which is critical against the Alchemist, but you're absolutely right. I think OP is just handing it to him. Oh, they're, they're hanging on every creep last hit right now. <laughs> uh, the bounty runes are going to spawn. We'll see that illusion picked up by Baboka. Uh, of course, this isn't Monkey King, probably the hero that he made his, you know, staked his name on, but I, I think Night Stalker fits that mold as they're going to make a move on Mind Control, trying to force him off this bottom lane. Obviously, Bristleback was the beast of Dota for the last like three, four months, but do you feel like he's still the same hero he used to be? Have teams gotten better figure him out if the nerfs finally caught up? I think so, and also IG is very well equipped to deal with it. They have a little bit of minus armor in the form of acid spray. They got that ice blast. If you land it on the uh, Bristleback, it does make him taking down much easier, because during a team fight, he, he generally has a ton of regen, and ice blast says no to all of that. Early days here, but IG off to a good start. So we'll see Miracle starting to get back in the game as bottom lane, the action heating up. Mind control slowed down, not quite enough for the cold feet to take. Uh -oh. It was almost there. Uh -oh. He sticks around, he's heading uh -oh. up. He wants the solo kill, but Ooh. not gonna happen. Q scores a crucial first blood for IG. And that is that is the game of Bristleback, right? You have an yep. IO there, you have a healer, like a dazzle. All of a sudden, you probably get two kills instead of dying. Now, I do want to mention, because this is some, somewhat of a kind of an unstandard build for Bristleback. Whenever Liquid plays Bristleback in the off lane, he loves to go soaring into mech. Not, not often that you see mech being purchased on Bristleback. And the reason that Team Liquid likes to do this, they like to group up in 10, 15 minutes and start pushing and applying pressure. 
But again, I think IG's lineup is well equipped to deal with that. They got the Asus Spray to slow down the push, and they got the Ice Blast. You know, if you want to buy that mech, sure, a single Ice Blast will ruin your team fight. So I'm looking for Mind Control to get that mech, and perhaps it won't be as effective as usual. Yeah, of course, we have been keeping an eye on the stacks here, as there's quite a few heroes that can take advantage. The Alchemist, the Bristleback, potentially Batrider. Lots of Flash Farmers in this game as XXS continues to apply pressure top. Traditionally, Weaver, one of the stronger laners to try and deal with the Batrider, and he's going to make his move. Matumba Man going in deep for a potential solo kill. As the uh -oh. Swarm takes him down, that Minus Armor is substantial. He's low, sticking up, but right into the clutches of GH. Liquid looking to strike back here. Sakuchi, and they will get the kill. A long committed chase does the trick, but at the same time, IG able to grab a kill of their own bottom. They take down Mind Control again, and one thing I wanted to mention, Luby, is it's not even nighttime yet, and IG are already winning the lanes. Now, ideally, is the time where Poboka can really shine. Yeah. You know, both carries getting a kill or helping the team to get a kill, but Burning didn't have to leave the lane, you know? Matumba Man chased like halfway across the map for that kill. Burning's like, yeah, I'm right back to the CS. So, slightly for me, uh, for IG here as well. Again, I, I feel like I'm painting this story where IG is, you know, doing super well, and they are, but you gotta keep in mind they are coming in here as the underdog. And this is really surprising to me that they're able to do this against one of the top teams at this TI. Well, Miracle has caught up very nicely here. Now down only 6 CS. It's not the stomp that it was at the start of the lanes and not really being pressured during this nighttime. Baboka, critical to see where he chooses to invest his time and resources, and it will be on bottom for now. Moving on to Kuro. Mind control there to shard him in. Good fly. trap, but <laughs> flap, flap, fly away. He is out. Batman with the easy escapes. Still, though, Liquid not giving up kills, and that is good news for them. It's always darkest before the dawn. It's I guess for IG Lumi, aside from this Night Stalker, anything else that you think is going to... Oh, they're finding openings here. Bottom lane, Kuro getting picked off. In a bit too far and does punish. Uh, but the Night Stalker, really the playmaker for now, right? Because you've got an Alchemist who needs to farm. The Batrider who has gotten his levels okay top lane, but is not really farming a whole lot. So the Blink Dagger or the Drums, that initiation tool, will be slow. Uh, thus, they're super reliant on Pavoka having this kind of start to, to be in the lead early. Yeah, and I think they're okay with that. If you look at IG's lineup, to me, they look like Team TSA. Like, look at how much vision they have. They got the Night Vision, they got the Batrider Vision, and of course, the Wolves will be coming out to just scout everywhere. To me, this is one team with, like, global uh, satellites, mind night control. optics, and then Mind Control is playing blind on this bottom lane. Double Boboka. damage room, but Boca chewing through him. Those fights don't phase him. Cold feet not going to set in. The quills are stacking up, but the DD rune gets the job done as Boboka continues to rampage through Liquid. This goes back to that IO ban where the Bristle just feels like a completely different hero of GH is able to back him up. Not something a Visage can really do. Not at this stage of the game, anyway. A large part of Kuro's ineffectiveness in this game is also due to the fact that there are a couple of heroes that could just get out of eye shards. We saw Nightstalker just flying over it. Guess what? Batrider can do exactly the same. So I feel like Kuro is feeling a bit stranded at the moment. He wants to poke in these lanes, but it's just hard. I think the easiest lane for him to kill was OP's mid lane Alchemist, but now that he's got level 7, as well as a uh, Helm of Iron Will, I, I think that kill is also not going to be likely. What is this level 2 Kuro Tusk going to contribute in the mid game? I'm not sure. Yeah, historically, when we've seen Kuro on the Tusk, he often finds those early kills, but. Watch out, mid lane, Miracle, Baboka's got your number, trying to slow him down with the cold feet coming in, they'll TP in, but it's a measly Visage, what can he do here, GH down, or sorry, a Miracle down, GH trying to respond with the Matumba Man joining the fray, Chase is on with the Sakuji, but Baboka's away to safety, they force out multiple TPs, and still easily gets away, and oh by the way, top lane, XXS, getting some free space now, hits level 6, can cut this wave, precious farm time wasted here for Team Liquid. From bad to worse. Yeah. But Tumpa Man forced the TP mid to hopefully get a kill for the team, unable to get it. And like you mentioned, XSS getting the freedom to catch up on the farm. I'm now, not gonna lie, LD. Oh, so we have a row in. Big and roll on the Q. They wanna catch him out here. The shards come through the Sunstrike. Will it connect with the cold snap? Miracle. Magic wall. He turns around. <laughs> All right. Just a quick 360. It will take him down in the end. Good catch on the uh, on the ancient apparition. Alchemist in the jungle gives up the lane to the AA and good critical pickoff to prevent that level six. Meanwhile, simultaneously, we see Mantama Man chasing down. Liquid showing some sign of uh, hope here. And you notice when they made that move, right as it hits daytime, they're already ganking mid. They're looking to pressure 
the Weaver, uh, with the Weaver. So this is the time for Liquid to get aggressive. One thing I do want to point out, Lumi, they have not stacked really much at all for this Bristleback. No Ancient stacks as of yet. So Mind Control off to a rough start, only 2k net worth, and won't have an easy comeback. He's going to need to skirmish more than just be able to freely farm stacks to get back in this game. I think when you're losing this hard in the early game against an Alchemist, there is a danger point where you stack and Alchemist just waltz into oh, your jungle. Kuro just went for one, actually missed it. The Ancient Prowler Shaman not cooperating. He also didn't quite aggro the creeps the first time. So perhaps they've been trying to stack, just not timing it right. But the economy game suffering here for Liquid. Normally one of their strongest attributes as a team. So LD, I got to get your opinion on this. On the bottom lane, we see Burning queuing up for the Necro 3s. As the panel mentioned, one of the standard build is going for that Mask of Madness armlet build just to get in the physical right-click uh, right damage. How do you feel about him kind of adjusting from that and going for the more traditional Necro book build? They're so physical damage focused, right? You've got a Visage, they're likely building a Medallion, GH already has it in the quick fight, the Swarm, throw a Blightstone in there, the Invoker right-clicks and Goo. Like, you don't want to have minus armor, and you also don't really want to run into this team without a BKB. So I like the Necro Book pickup a lot. It allows him to keep his hero a bit safer uh, and still apply pressure as a Liquid move in. Trouble. They want to go on this bottom lane. They're going to commit forward onto Q, catching out the Ancient Apparition. One more attack, scores the kill. A very successful daytime here for Liquid, and all the while, Miracle trying to play catch up in the mid lane, but this Alchemist is far ahead. 7k net worth, almost halfway to the Relic as XXS gives GH Pursuit, diving deep. Behind this top tower, there will be a rotation for Pearl, but in addition to that, like the Big Bad Wolf is coming. coming in hot and heavy. He wants GH, looking to munch him up. Nice. Snowball keeps him alive. Miracle joins the fray. Burning can do not but watch and now commits the familiar summon. Jukes away. So far, not too shabby for Liquid. Uh oh, this wolf is somewhat confused. He's where'd I go? Just runs around the corner, still maintaining that really high movement. And they can pressure bottom because this Lycan left the lane. Will there even be a rotation? Still. They're going to just get a tower here. No level 6 for Bavoka. Doesn't have the point in Darkness just yet. And with that, Tier 1 down. First blood, as far as the towers go, is actually Liquid's opening up the map for a team that sorely needs it. And with that, still keeping this game pretty close. A very strong recovery for Team Liquid, at least handling some of the other heroes. But I think the biggest hero that isn't really tracked up right now is the Alchemist. He is 108 CS in 10 or 11 minutes, rather. The birds. Save the birds. All right, but this Alchemist, back to the main point, is once he gets Radiance and he's just going to farm up the map, I, I don't think Team Liquid could keep up with OP. They're not particularly good at killing the Illusions once they get farmed enough, right? They don't have a Hex. Uh, I guess they have decent damage, but nobody on their team is particularly amazing at dealing with them. So those split-pushing Illusions could be a nuisance. As far as mobility goes, they're okay there. Great late game once the Invoker gets his farm and his points and wax the BOTs, but not there yet. Look at burning top lane, though. Pressuring this tier one tower. It's uncontested because Liquid are on the move, trying to pressure IG in their jungle, but as it is nighttime, Bavoka able to easily dodge that gank, so IG will respond. They get this Liquid tier one. They open up that jungle a little bit. Let's see what their next move is. Batrider Blink still about 500 gold short. Meanwhile, as you mentioned, Radiance coming soon, and with that, but Radiance and the Blink, there's going to be a big power spike for IG. Yep. Let's not forget that Q is about to hit level 6 as well, so it really combines nicely into a timing. You blink in, you lasso, you ice blast. Even the tankiest heroes, such as Mind Control's Bristleback, will just fall very, very quickly. Looks like he's working into a hood. Oh, they're aggressive, Lumi. They're already going for this tower. They're doing it at nighttime. They're doing it with a Bristle who's not particularly farmed in front. But here come the familiars, but Tumba Man getting onto Q. The Swarm not going to connect. Don't know if he actually needs it. Stun number nice. one, stun number two, if there were any questions about GH's versatility. Well, they're getting answered now. This tier one now well under seed, but Bernie continue to pressure at the tier two top. Pearl wants to make a move. He could be getting trapped. Nice stop on the back line, though. Too, looking for the flank, revs up the snowball, then tries to retreat. The shards are there, but not going to keep burning away because he's running in. Munches up the tusk. Little snow cone for dessert and bottom lane. XXS being pressured here. Batrider almost down. Miracle pumps the damage in, scores the kill, and the tower denied top. Still Liquid losing more, more and more map control, but they are responding well in terms of kills. They are, but I think the map control will be a big factor moving into this mid game. Again, Team Liquid is a lineup that lacks vision to begin with, as we do watch that Batrider kill open things up with a cold snap into a meteor. 
But back to the main point is that once Team Liquid, especially when they lose this mid tier one tower, they are going to be absolutely blind, especially during nighttime against IG. And the analysts talked a decent amount about the vision game. I just want to emphasize that you have obviously Night Stalker Batride already very strong, and then you have a Lycan with the Wolves. So yep. combine that with HD apparition, like there is absolutely no way Liquid should have the vision advantage unless they win multiple fights, get a gem. Uh, it's expensive even to invest in that. And here comes the Blink debut. They cut off the bat, but he comes back with a vengeance on the mid lane, pushing mind control in, controlling him nicely. IG score the kill. Can they transition for an objective Lumi? Oh, they want to try to roll straight to the pit. No wow. hesitation from IG. Is there any way Liquid can contest this? Do they have the firepower? I mean, Matumba Man could port back to the tower, maybe throw in the swarm. They could maybe send some birds in, but IG is just doing it way too quickly. They will take down the big rock man and I, claim the agent. Fighting into this is so hard, right? The radiance is up. That, that miss chance is going to be absolutely huge against all this physical yeah. damage. So Liquid just don't want to risk it in a 4v5. I do want to point out one playing. tiny thing in, in the gank that we just saw. We saw the lasso coming out, and Bobuka cast a silence on the tusk. And the idea behind that is he wants to prevent the snowball save. So we're going to keep looking out for that in these upcoming, upcoming team fights. The Night Stalker will try to shut down the tusk, and then the Bat Rider will get to do his thing. It really is the only reset that Liquid have, right? right. Barring and a, it's a, a very, very farmed, unreliable one. Yeah, bar, barring a very farmed invoker, uh, but likely he's going to be the target for those lassos. You don't have Avenge, you don't have the GH. You know, Earthshaker or Io, both of which are fantastic defensively. Uh, in particular for interrupting that chain of initiation. As the move happens in the top lane, they look for mind control, trying to deal with him, and he will be shut down again. That is death number five for the Bristleback. He is just not a factor this game. It's always a bad sign for, for your team when you're dying to a bat rider who's not even ganking you with Flaming Lasso. That means you go back to the base, he gets mana, and he can smoke up and gank you again. I feel like IG is winning this game so hard that Team Liquid needs to do something amazing to make a comeback. They have good wards here. They might be able to set up something on Burning if he sticks around, but you can see the Wolves marching in, scouting out Liquid, and so all of a sudden it's IG who could potentially get the jump here. Lasso available, XXS coming back and Burning, juking away to the north, dodging the gank. And I mean, we've talked about the vision, we're gonna continue to do so as GH gets stunned up here in the woods, but nice familiar micro. Get some back safely from OP, who is fearing rather fearless. Lumi with that Aegis picked up and the Radiance. Just these wolves constantly falling liquid. He's even using them to farm. It's just purely about getting the jump and trying to find pickoffs. IG going for a smoke gank. They have the vision right on this ramp. They can go for the GH for the quick kill if they want. I think they're seeking for a bigger kill. They, they want see Miracle. Oh, this is the hero that needs to farm. He can't afford to die, but he's at the neutrals. And Miracle trapped down. No mercy from the Vigilante bat. He'll take him down again. And this ward is just seeing so much. Curl now is detected. He's only level five. His raindrop is not going to save him as it's being burned off. Okay, nice snowball here. Alchemist is going to stun himself, but there's just way too many heroes. Curl will also go down. 5k net worth lead here, 17 minutes in. And just for a second, take a look at that net worth bar on Alchemist. It is. Ginormous. And IG making the right calls here. They get the kills and then they transition straight into a tier one tower. They want to further eviscerate Liquid's ability to get out on the map. So now only the tier one mid left standing as far as those outer structures go. And they get the jump here. You can see like when that happens, Liquid just, they don't really have a reply. They're constantly getting caught off guard, especially when it's nighttime. It will now be day. They'll maybe have a little breathing room, but I mean, Lumi, does Liquid have to change something? Can they afford to like give up these kills, just try to farm, turtle up for late game? Do they have to take some risks of their own? Is there an item they're waiting for? Like, What sort of adjustments do you want to see out of Liquid? I think they just have to keep taking risks. They are so far behind, and they have a lineup that needs a ton of items to operate. You know, Miracle Invoker takes a while to get online. I think the adjustment is going for those Lincoln Spheres that the panel has mentioned. Miracle is going for it right now. Weaver, I think, needs to go for one as well. You just need to make sure that you're surviving against these Batrider Lassos. Miracle, though, Sunstrike kill, I believe, in the base. Yeah, almost killed one off Matumba Man solo and catches Baboka on the TP out. 
Sick player now okay, looking for OP. OP. He does have Aegis here. They'll have to kill him twice or get out, and they do. Kill him once, look for more. Mind Control joining the fray, but has to be careful. Look for the familiar suns, trying to lock OP down, but the Ice Blast is there. Connecting on two, blast them back in with the play break. XXS, oh, OP, he even finds Matumba. Ends the killing spree, but the combo comes through. Miracle roasting up the wolf and donning his hide as a prize. Three do fall for Liquid, but they get the Aegis. They do manage to kill off the Lycan. They keep their Invoker alive, so again, not the greatest fights for Liquid, but definitely could be worse. I, I think it looked pretty good for uh, for Team Liquid at the beginning, but as soon as they took down the Aegis, I think they just needed to get back. They, Even with the Invoker coming in, they ultimately don't have enough firepower to take down OP a second time. And speaking of OP, he is BOTs, he's working on the Manta style, and that split push that you keep referring to is coming, and it's coming very fast. What is the answer for the split push? I have no clue. I mean, Invoker could help with Forge Spirits. The Weaver could take down some of these illusions, but I think OP will just be absolutely everywhere. What I love about the this build in this particular game is that they, they can take advantage of those lanes being pushed in, right? They have a lot of heroes that scale well with farm. Heroes like Ancient Apparition, Night Stalker from the support role. Obviously, the Lycan, the Batrider can certainly use the farm. And they have really good map control to follow up on towers falling, on waves being pushed in and punish it with the vision game and with pickoff. So it's not just split push without a follow-up, it's split push with a purpose. Yes. Currently looking for the jump on the mid lane again, it's XXS, and he catches the save. Kuro, no escape, silent stuff, dealt with early. Good familiar stuns by GH, but still the chase is on. Can they follow this up with another tower? They look for more, hounding GH from the side, XXS blinks in. The Swarm descends, and IG keep the ball rolling. Multiple kills at nighttime, more towers claimed. I do want to point out that they managed to get a deep ward down. While that was all happening, far behind this tier two tower in the mid lane. So again, they are, they're not just getting the kills, they're following it up with crucial objectives and setting up for the next fight. Yep. All the meanwhile, their economy game is going strong. Bobuka is constantly providing vision. Speaking of which, Matumba Man thinks he's safe, thinks he's farming, and the gank is coming. Well, you wanted a Lincoln Sphere for him. The lasso is still cooling down. Okay, so they need to get up the silence or time lapse out, but it's on cooldown. Flame break back in with the silence coming through. The cold feet, ice blast. The bug is squashed. IG making it look easy versus liquid. Again, another gank without flaming lasso. That as Team Liquid, what do you do against this? You can't farm. They have to take these risks. They have to get out there and farm because that's how their lineup operates. But right now, IG is just giving them absolutely no breeding room. One thing I, I do want to revisit is the question I brought up with the Necro books. As the game moves on, you can see that these Necro 3s are so effective. There are two Invis heroes on the side of Team Liquid, the Sakuchi from the Weaver as well as the Ghost Walk from Invoker. And with the pop of the book, both those abilities are out of the window in terms of effectiveness. So. Really good choice here from Burning. I like the fact that he itemized back into a Vlad's. A very standard build, but again, the name of the game here for IG is about armor stacking. Make sure that you just don't give away any easy kill, and every piece of armor you stick on your heroes is going to make that happen. OP with his two pairs of boots shoving in this middle lane, looking for the tier two, but here comes Liquid on the wraparound. Mind control stacking up the quills. OP's the man in front. They want to find something a bit tastier on the backside. So they sneak around, they try to get the jump on IG, but that's damn hard when they can fly. The bat jukes away and OP rushes in, straight onto the bristle, nails him with the ice blast and to his cross where he dies. Now looking on the other side of the fight for Miracle, they take him down too. IG completely overrunning Liquid and now- This could be Rex right here. Might even be 60 more. seconds no before Miracle backs. comes back. What are they gonna do against this? They can this? go top, Lumi. They can maybe get two without the Invoker. Can they cut the wave? Can they slow this down? Where are the answers for Liquid? Where is the Liquid from the group stage? IG are absolutely astounding in this game, number one. Good stall, though, by GH with the familiar stunt, but they keep on smacking here. Melee racks dropping, dropping, will go down. Familiar's being farmed up, still no invoker. 25 seconds without Miracle, but IG, content with their one lane advantage, won't push it further. They back away. They know the next Roche could be up now, and if not now, very soon. So they're going to wait for that next stages. 
A Tumba Man trying his best to get the Creep Wave pushed out on the top, but quickly answered back as the Alchemist ports back. LD, it might be too soon to talk about game two, because Team Liquid do have a chance to hold for a late game comeback if IG starts to make a mistake, but let's assume that IG does take this game. Is there anything from the draft that you, you might want Curl to change? Because I do feel like Curl got somewhat outdrafted here. I liked the bans from IG in phase two. There was a game that Liquid played against EG where they went for like mega push. I think they had like a, a Visage, Broodmother mid, fifth pick, which caught their opponents a bit off guard. Uh, I want to say there was like a Lycan or a Lone Druid in that game as well. So I think IG definitely watched that replay. You saw their second stage bans were very targeted, but hold that thought because IG, they know this game isn't over yet. They want to secure the victory. Snowball. The snowball, good. Retaliation from Kuro, but now he's being controlled by the Night Stalker. Provoca's in through the rear. The Ice Blast comes oh. through. Another connection with the Flame Break. That teamwork making the dream work for IG. Okay. They will shatter too, and now again continuing pursuit. Liquid will keep the Invoker alive. And Matumba Man hanging on by a thread, but the chase is on. If they can keep the vision, Matumba's in yes, trouble. They can. No time lapse. Lock him down and finish him off. IG putting a bow on it here. And now Shrine's on the menu. Roshan is back in about five seconds or so. So IG could just swoop in, check it with the Wolf, and, and take it after that as well. So, so yeah, I mean, go, if it goes to that game too, I, I would like to see GH on something where he can have his impact. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a playmaker, maybe he takes on the, t the Tusk. Obviously, Kuro is a fantastic Tusk. And ever since the departure of, of Jerax, he's really stepped up. but. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, you were asking about GH this game, and I said, you know, I don't think he's going to show up because of the lineup and, and how it is. We're going to watch this team fight one more time. At the beginning of the fights, looking pretty good for Team Liquid, especially with Batrider wasting the lasso on Miracle's Lincoln Sphere. But as the fight dragged on, they just figured out, oh, we can't kill this Alchemist. Alchemist is chasing us down with these Necrobooks. Once again, IG just flexing their muscle. I, I will say, never sleep on a Miracle Invoker, but that said, this ward blew me. This ward. Gonna make life very difficult for Liquid. IG in perfect formation here to anticipate this Liquid expedition. Kuro leads it boldly oh. forward and the smoke is revealed by the least gankable hero on the team. They're gonna try anyway. OP does get locked down by the shards. He actually gets pushed away from his team about as good as it gets, but they can't focus him down. He just waltzes away. All the while, the rest of IG weren't really doing anything, but now they make their move. Lasso, Ice Blast, connecting on two. Boom. And in a song of ice and fire, Liquid are overrun. Kuro gets brought down. Three hit the deck. Now back for mind control, turning him into Chop Suey. They will kill him off. Chat will be spammed, and now Roche is next. IG putting on a clinic here to open up this TI. Two things about this draft for Team Liquid. It's not their uh, group stage draft. Group stage draft, they always have some mega push. Yeah, sure, you got Visage, you got that Invoker, but I don't think it's enough push, at least not the same standard as Team it's, Liquid it's shows. It's a slower push. Slower it's a, push. It's a push that takes a lot of time and exactly. farm to come online, and IG have not given them that time. Second thing about this draft, two games that Team Liquid lost out of the three games that they lost in group stage was to a Batrider. I think looking into the game two draft, I think you might want to take out the Batrider, especially against one of the best Batrider players in China. XSS has been absolutely spectacular in a hero. Or, or have a counter. You know, they, sure. they picked both of their supports to open the draft, but I think IG did recognize that. They didn't expect that mid to core visage that sometimes no tell runs, and as a result, they've been able to punish with the bad pick. So IG move in. Looking for the flank is Matumba Man, but already the base is in shambles. Two lanes down. From bad to worse for Liquid. IG gonna retreat now. They've been systematic thus far. Still have some time here with their ages, their cheese. Any reason not to just walk down bottom lane and go for the megas? Maybe wait for natural nighttime just to make sure that you have a very, very long team fight. The one thing that we haven't really mentioned at all, hold that thought here as Q. We'll go down, but we'll do some damage to Matumba Man before he dies. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Not worth it if he gets caught out. No Matumba Lincoln's Man. here. Just no yet. time lapse. He already used it to try and get out of there safely. Oh, and IG pursue him. They see him sakuching through the wave. They expect him in the trees. It looks like he's juked it. He will TP out. So a little space created, but they're going to need a lot more of that. IG still hunting for him. Now maybe just gonna back away and wait for all five, wait for that Ice Blast, and like you said, wait for that natural nighttime. Coming soon. Also, OP is very close to finishing a Shiva's Guard, so having that extra bit of armor allow him, allows him to tank in the front. 
although it doesn't feel like he even needs it, he's been pretty much immortal throughout this whole game. Liquid hanging on by a hope. Probably a prayer as well at this point. They do have the gem to try and deal with IG, but now the issue is going to be like, you might even see them coming. Does it matter? They're getting to that level of farm on IG where they don't have to catch you off guard. They don't have to necessarily have the vision advantage. So this yeah. gem will help, but will it be enough? And now there's a BKB. BKB lasso, your only counter initiation is what? A snowball save? That's basically it. Yeah, it's the same thing. You know, you, you pray on the Lincoln Sphere, you pray that uh, the snowball gets there. The BKB just makes the life a little bit easier for XSS, but the overall game plan hasn't changed for either team. IG just gonna start battering down this bottom lane, it appears, as they congregate. Burning looking to join the squad. Assault Caress completed for him. He has been the siege engine to back up the Alchemist as the frontline tank. Now the Sheep is coming out and gets aggressive. Charging in, lobbing in the stun, going for GH, even through the pipe, the damage is substantial. They try to slay the beast, but the Alchemist shrugs it off. Forcing Liquid on their heels, chewing through the Bristle's HP. I'm the real tank now, says OP. This is not your Bristle back of three to six months ago. GH now taking the stun again and burning, racing onto him. They turn back for mind control. Miracle sounds the retreat with the deafening blast, but Kuro is caught in the crossfire. A second hero down, the support duo of Liquid that has been so instrumental in their run to first place in the groups has been very quiet in this game. One, two, and 13 combined. The true support player to me was, they had no role in the early game. They had no good lanes to gank. They weren't able to win their own individual lanes when they weren't ganking. They weren't stacking like you were mentioning. I just felt the effectiveness wasn't there and Boboka spamming them Jayos as a, uh, uh, IG B about B to B take B Mega Creeps. Boboka showing that he is not just a Monkey King player. 4, 2, and 15. He might overextend here, but it's okay for IG. They've already gotten the Megas. We have seen some Mega Creep comebacks, but down 30k gold. You'll probably need four or five fights to turn it, and Liquid do lose one. They'll sound the GG. IG dominant to open up TI. What more is there to say?